All right, so in this video, I want to talk about creating stateful variables and what that actually means. So let's say we have this component here. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just remove this out of here for now. And let's also remove this function. So just a basic component here that returns this paragraph. So right now, if I go ahead and create a variable here, and I'm just going to assign some text to it. So if I want to use this variable now when I return this view for this component, I can just go ahead and remove this text and use brackets here. And here we can just go ahead and type that variable, my text. So right now, if I save this and run this, so I'm going to do npm start. Hit enter. Let's go ahead and open this link. You should be able to do that by doing control click on this. There it is. See, it says my text here, which is basically this variable right here. So if we change this to let, we should be able to redefine that variable. And we should be able to just say my text equals some new text and save it. And now if I go back and look at my output, it says some new text. So far, so good. So now let's say we're going to create a button here. And I'm just going to say click me. So that should just put a button here. As you can see, it says click me. When I click on that button, I would like this text to change, which is really this text over here. So what I'll do, I'll just assign a function to that button. And let's just create some sort of function, change text. Now that function doesn't exist, so I'm going to go ahead and create that here. You can create an arrow function or this function, it's up to you. And in this function, I would like to redefine that text. So I'm going to try to just take the text and make it something else. So that's going to be this variable right there. So now if we go back and take a look at what we got, we have some new text. If I go ahead and click on this click me, you'll see that this doesn't change. All right, so let's go back and see what happened here. So why there is no update? Well, it kind of makes sense, right? So when the component loads here, we run this function app. And when we run that function app, it's going to declare this variable within this function. Then we're going to change it to this. And then this function is not going to run at that point. It's just going to return this, whatever is this, my text at this point. So then we click on this and it runs this function within this app function. But as this runs this function, it's not going to rerun this return to get us the results of that variable. So let's do this. Let's first of all take this out because we don't need this to see what's going on. So right now it's just going to say my text here instead of saying whatever it was before. And if I click, nothing is going to happen. So what we need to do after this click happens and the variable changes, we need to basically re-render this component all over again to return these results. Now to re-render this component, we have to do something similar we did, for example, in this index function when we render that app component. So what if I just copy this, go back, and after we do this change in this function, we just paste this text right there. So that should re-render that whole thing on a page. Now, to be able to do this, this React DOM doesn't exist here, so we have to import that. Like this. And at this point, if I save and try this again, you'll see it still doesn't work. So if I save this, go back, this is my text here. If I hit click me, it still says my text here. So why is that? The reason is because when we run this re-render again, it's going to run this function app all over again from here. 
And in this function, again, even if this variable was changed, we're gonna redefine this variable all over again here. And now we're back to the same thing. By the time we output this return, we get the same text over here without the change. So what if we take this variable and move it outside of the function? So now we declare this variable outside of this component, this function app. And then we're gonna use that over here to output that on a page. And then on click event, we're gonna change that variable and then we're gonna re-render the content. So if we save this, go back, this is what we got. If I do click me, so that works, as you can see. Now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna remove all the stuff that I just did. So we're gonna take this out of here. We're not going to import this. And we're not gonna do this. And instead, we're gonna solve the same problem with something that's called use state hook in React. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to import it from this React package. And we can do that just like that. So this use state hook is a function. And what this function is gonna allow us to do is to not have that weird thing that I just did a second ago. So what we'll do here, we'll create a variable that's going to store whatever the result of the function is. So for example, if I do my rest and then I run that function use state like this, and initially I'm gonna pass an argument to this function. I'm gonna say my text here. And when you run this function, it returns the results, which is going to be an array of two things. So in this my rest variable, we're gonna have two results. We're gonna have the first thing in the array, which will be what we call the state, basically the value of this variable we pass. And then we're gonna get a second part of this. And the second piece in our array is going to be a function that allows us to change the value of this. If I wanted to right now render the value of this my text here over here, what I would do, I would just say my res and then zero, that first part of that array. If I go ahead and save this and go back and take a look at this, see it says my text here, which is basically what we got out of here. Let's actually just do a new text so we can verify that it actually works. There it is, my new text. Now, if I want to be able to change the value of that my new text here, what I can do over here, instead of doing what I did before, I can just use that function, which is that second argument in this, which is in array, the second would be one instead of zero. And this will be a function, so the function will run like this. And here, we can pass a new value to this function. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say new text. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this, go back, so you see it says my new text here. And if I go ahead and click on this click me, see this works and it gives me a new value. So usually instead of doing this zeros and ones, what you end up doing, you just use this destructuring or whatever this is called with this array brackets. And instead of then referring to zero and one, we can just basically create some variable here and usually people like to call them like this one would be the variable name and the second one would be set that. You can call this anything you want, the first one and the second one. So this is gonna be this function over here and this will be this over here at this point. So with this, I don't have to do this zero and one array stuff. Instead, I can just do set my text on this, like this, and this is this. So if I save this and go back, it should do the same thing. There you go. So this use state 
allows us to create a variable, and then it allows us to have a function, which is this function, and when we run that function, it's going to allow us to change what the variable value is, and then it also re-renders the stuff on the page. So basically, it handled all our problems for us. We now can preserve the value of a variable within this function next time we run that component. And then we can also update our component because we run this function. So finally, one more thing I want to show you here is that sometimes you'll want to take the current value of the variable and do something using that variable in this change. So right now, I don't do that. I just basically just change the variable and that's it. But what if I needed the previous value to update to a new value, right? So for example, let's say we change this to a number one initially, and then we can just render that number one here. And then what I want to do, I want to basically go one up and go two, three, four after I click on this. So to do this, what you can do here within this set my text function, this allows us to pass a function. And in this function, we'll get the argument, which is basically our old value. And what we can do here, we can return that old value plus one. So if I save this, go back and take a look. See, it's a one. If I go ahead and click me, two, click again, three, four, five. Better way of writing this, if you wanted to do arrow function syntax, you could just remove this word function and do this, which should work the same way. And since we only have one parameter here, we can also just get rid of these parentheses. So this should get us the same results. If I save this, go back, and take a look, click, there it is, it goes up. And then finally, since our function is just a one liner, we just return this. We could also just remove this keyword return and this curly brackets. So we'll have the short version of this whole thing. And if I save this, go back, let's refresh this. It works just fine. And there it is. And this is what we call a stateful variable. And hopefully this illustrates why we need those. You know, before I finish this video, I want to just do another thing here, just to reemphasize the fact that when you call this function over here in this use state, it re-renders the component, meaning it will rerun this function app all over again, right? That's essentially what you're getting out of it. For example, if I go back to that old way of doing things, I can go here and create a variable above this whole thing. And we'll set it to something. So now if I go here and create a paragraph, I should be able to just output that variable here, right? So this now refers to this which is not inside of this function. So if I go now inside of this function, when we change text, right before I run this, I go above and redefine that variable and save this. If I go back and take a look, see initially it should be something and we should have that one as a part of that state. So as you can see, one something. Now, if I go ahead and click me, see this changes to two, but this will also change because the variable changed in here. And then because we run this, it re-renders this and we get the update. So again, I'm not doing this because this was a good way of handling this. If you wanted more variables, you should really handle it within the state, but it illustrates the fact that every time you call this function, it will rerun this app function and it will re-render the whole component. Let's get rid of this.
And that should do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.